What is up guys, welcome to your 63rd C++ tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys another example of exception handling. So let me go ahead and I want to cover you know one other little inky dinky thing. It isn't a main concept but if I don't cover this I'm gonna you know it's like OCD I need to cover it or else it's gonna bug me for the rest of my life. So let me go ahead and first what I like to do is this whenever I'm working with exception handling I like to set up the framework first so I like to go ahead and put try right there and after this put catch with my parameters right like that and that way whenever we get you know type in a bunch of code in here I don't have to go search and be like alright what's this curly brace go to what do these parentheses go to it's really easy if you set up the outside first and work your way in then that way you don't get confused so let's go ahead and in this program I just want to build a really simple calculator I'm gonna have the user input two numbers and I'm gonna make sure that the bottom number is not zero because remember you're not allowed to divide by zero or else the you know your computer is gonna blow up so what I like to do first is uh well before I even do that let's go ahead and just start with the program so let's go ahead and make two variables int num1 and I'll save int num2 for later. So let's go ahead and give the user a prompt like C out. And we'll just say something like enter first number and line. And now let's go ahead and give them a way to enter that number into num1. And by the way, I read this a couple days ago, and maybe this will help you guys um, understand this arrow and this arrow. The arrow shows the direction that information is flowing. Now whenever you output something it goes to your computer screen so th this text is going to your computer screen. Now whenever you input something it gets inputted and stored as a variable on your computer. So the text that you enter is going to be stored in a variable in your computer. You see where the information is flowing? To your computer screen to your computer. Basically the information is flowing to the user and back into the computer. Pretty cool, huh? So I probably should have said that in like <laughs> my second tutorial, but you know, 63 tutorials in I guess is better late than never. So now the user entered a number and it's stored in the variable number one. So now let's, well, might as well just copy this right here and copy this and paste it right over here and we'll change this to 2. So enter 2, it's going to be stored to 2, and enter second number. Pretty good. So now after this what we want to do is it really doesn't matter what number they enter for you, you know, number 1, as long as it's a number. But number 2, it does matter because the second number cannot be equal to 0 because if you remember from, you know, 5th grade math class or whatever, you can't divide by zero. It's illegal. The math gods will not allow it. So let's go ahead and have an error message pop up whenever you try to divide by zero. And we can just go ahead and put a simple if statement. If num2 is equal to zero, let's go ahead and throw an exemption. We'll just throw the number zero. And now what we want to do is remember if the number two is not equal to zero that means that the numbers that they entered were valid so we'll just go ahead and print out the answer on the screen num1 divide by num2 and in that line so basically if they enter zero is a second number we're gonna get an error if they enter two valid numbers it's just gonna print out the answer by dividing the top number by the bottom number so if we do indeed get an error, remember, in the last tutorial I tell you guys that you can pass in a number to use as like an error reference number, and you can just write something, C out, you can't divide by X. And that way, whenever we throw zero, it's going to pass zero in as x, and it's going to say you can't divide by zero. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Enter the first. I'm going to first run a program that works perfectly. Enter 32 for my first one. Enter 16 for my second one. And 32 divided by 16 is indeed 2, as we can see here. So my program is working beautifully. But let's go ahead and say that we have an idiot that's 
gonna, you know, never knows how to use a calculator and is gonna try to divide by zero. Okay, 32, okay, everything's going good so far. But then I'm gonna try and enter zero is my second number. And whenever I try to hit this and solve this riddle, we can see you can't divide by zero. So as you notice, as soon as you get an error message, it basically just jumps right down to this catch block right here and it says, hold on, you did something wrong, here's your error message, you can't divide by zero. So now the little itty bitty thing I want to cover in this tutorial is this. You can have multiple catch blocks to catch different types of error messages. Right now the only type of error message I showed you guys is an integer error, but you can catch a double, um, you can actually catch a character if you want, you can catch any different type you want. Now, aside from covering that, I don't need to show you guys, you know, the different types of error messages you can catch. But what I do need to show you guys is this little thing right here. Dot dot dot. You're saying, what the heck type is this? A dot dot dot. Okay, I understand that I can catch, you know, ints and characters. Whenever you just want any error message to be caught, for example, you don't know what error message is going to happen in this try block, but anytime any error message occurs, you just want it to be caught right here. Then you can use the dot dot dot. So dot 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 is pretty much the all encompassing, the default catch. So basically, if you have in, so basically, anytime an error message is thrown, it's going to be caught by the dot dot dot, no matter if it's an int character yada 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 so with that being said this is the catch that you see most often I just wanted to throw you guys um, the piece of information that you can indeed catch specific types of error messages but this is the one you're gonna see more often so let's go ahead and try and run this and it says alright and one second I did something wrong oh I see what I did I actually tried to pass an X and X is no longer existing. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to run this one more time and you see it says enter first number 32 and then we try to divide by zero, get an error message and we get that default you can't divide by error message. So typically you would wanna write something like this. It would probably make more sense but anyways I just wanna stress to you guys that aside from catching different types of error messages you can also catch general error messages and that's what we're going to be doing most of the time so now that you understand that you understand most of everything there is to know about exception handling there are a couple other things that uh i don't even know if i want to cover or not there's like passing in objects that you can catch and also um you know inheriting from exception classes and default messages and stuff but i really don't know if i want to get into that i mean we understand the basics so um, in the next tutorial, don't know if I'm going to be covering more about exception handling or, you know, jumping into the next topic, but either way, it's going to be amazing. So if you have any questions, check out my forum, thenewboston.com slash forum, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.